Hello friends and welcome back to my channel and also welcome to the first day of my Christmas in July series for this year. So in today's video, we're going to be making a ring bound Christmas cookie tag collection. And we're going to be doing that using up all of our junk mail envelopes. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, subscribe to my channel, turn on that little notifications bell so you're notified when I post new videos. Also make sure your notification settings are set to all so that you receive all of my notifications. All right, let's get started. So I have quite a few different envelopes here. All of them are junk mail envelopes and i have i've been saving them up for a while so every time i get junk mail i've been saving them and i was like this will be the perfect project to use up some of these junk mail pieces so um i'm going to have about six to eight different tags that we're going to make out of these junk mail envelopes some of the tags will incorporate two different envelopes um but we're going to just do each one individually and then um, we'll put them all together at the end. So for this project, I've gone ahead and printed out some of my vintage inspired holiday papers that I have here. Some of them are double sided, some of them are not. Um, I have a whole collection of beautiful vintage inspired um, papers and I actually did them last year for a journal that I was doing last year, but I incorporated some new ones. So I have some really great ones for this project. So as you can see, many of them are um, from vintage greeting cards. Many of them are from other vintage Christmas books, kind of all immersed into one collection of vintage papers. You can use this for a lot of different crafting ideas. As you will see, we'll be using these papers throughout the whole month in different projects that I have going on. And they will be available on my site. So the link for these will be in the description um, below. Okay, so in addition to my papers, I also have some ephemera. I have um, a, t a bunch of vintage tags that we're gonna be using. I also have a lot of vintage actual book pages that come from original um, vintage Christmas books. Uh, I have more than just what's here, but I'm just kind of showing you an example. And then we're also gonna be using up all of those junk mail envelopes that you receive in the mail. We're gonna turn these into a collection of Christmas recipes that you can give as a gift or you can keep as your- Okay, so for tag number one, I'm using two envelopes. These are both just the standard size um, business envelope. This one is, uh, let's see, almost nine and a half by four and an eighth. And I think they're both exactly the same size. I picked two envelopes that were the same or very close to the same size. So the first thing that we're gonna do with these two envelopes, now these envelopes are actually going to make the largest tag that's in our collection. So it's gonna be the tag that's gonna be in the very back of the ringed, ring bound um, recipe collection. So I'm going to go ahead and we, as you can see, I've ripped these envelopes open. So they weren't open very carefully. They're not new envelopes. This one is a little bit better, but I'm going to just go ahead and seal these back up shut. You can do that with, um, I'm actually just going to use my glue stick for this just because I don't want to waste my other glue. And I'm just going to do this to seal it back up. I just want it closed up as best as possible. So, and it doesn't matter, um, we're gonna be covering this, so it doesn't matter if there's like rough edges or rough spots like this, um, because like I said, the paper is gonna cover this, but I am just gonna seal these right up with my glue stick. Okay, so for tag number one, I'm using two envelopes. These are both just the standard size um, business envelope. This one is, uh, let's see, almost nine and a half by four and an eighth. Okay, so once I have these all sealed up, we're going to fold them so that way it creates a multi pocket tag. Since this is going to be the longest tag, I wanted to make sure I had it roughly. 
Let's see what the size on this is. Once I folded it, I wanted it to be just around seven inches. It's slightly larger than seven inches, but that's okay. It's whatever you want. I just wanted this first fold to be a big enough pocket. So this first fold is gonna be about two and a quarter inches. So that will be our first pocket. So then the second envelope, I did the same thing. I folded it over, but I wanted this pocket a little bit bigger because this envelope is going to set inside the first envelope so that we have multiple pockets and um, multiple layers. So there'll be a pocket here, a pocket here, and a pocket down here. So the second envelope I actually folded so that it was... Um, just over six inches and then the pocket is about three and a quarter inches so once I have both of these all folded now we're going to figure out what paper we're going to use to cover these now I picked this paper right here it's a baker's chocolate cookbook so I put the image of the inside cover of the cookbook on this gorgeous background with some shiny bright ornaments. So we're gonna use this one. This one is double-sided, so it has this nice kind of vintage Christmas tablecloth on the background with all kinds of sprinkles of white flour. Um, since this is a cookbook theme book, I wanted to incorporate some baking features. So, what I think I'm going to do is these images right here fit these envelopes almost perfectly. I'm actually going to cut this in half. Let's cut this right in half just so that way it's a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just guesstimating halfway point. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now I have two pieces like this. It's just gonna be a little bit easier to work with. For this first one, I want this top lace portion at the very top of my envelope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just flipping this over and I'm using my envelope as a guide. I can see where my fold line is right here. So I'm going to just take my pencil and just mark where my fold line is, and then I'm going to cut that bottom off. So I just want a piece that's gonna be just big enough to fit into that first section right there. So you can see there's my top of my envelope. Now it is gonna be a little larger on the sides. That's okay, we can, we can trim that off. I'm gonna take my glue, and I'm using my Fabrifix glue. I'm going right over the window. Some of the windows on the envelope will be utilizing and some of them we're just gonna be covering up. This one we're just gonna cover up. Okay, we wanna put our image on here and I wanna just make sure that the actual image lines up right in the center of my envelope. Just like that. So now I'm gonna just trim off this excess. And I am saving all of my scraps. I always save my scraps because you never know if you're gonna use it for some sort of decorating afterwards. Okay, so there is one background. And now we're gonna do the same thing with my other background. Now this one's a little bit different. Remember, this one's gonna go on the inside. You're not gonna see this in here, you're only gonna see what's up top, up here. So I wanna make sure that whatever I put up there, um, which I could put this background piece. Okay, so let's put this on the top of this envelope right here. So yeah, I'm just putting that right over my envelope and then we'll trim off that excess. So now we have this right here. So this will be a pocket here, and then this will be the back of the tag. And now we've just gotta cover these front two pieces. Now this one down at the bottom, you're gonna see the most of. So what do I wanna put on the front? Put some glue on here, and then I'm going to just line this right up that now remember this is folded over on the back here so we're going to be cutting all of this off
so there is that part and then this will go in here and then we just have one more section to cover and i'm going to use some more of this back side of the paper here for this um and we don't need a whole lot of it so let's just do a small little bit at the top here we just need enough so that you will see it will be covered let's just do i'm just making a little mark so i know that i don't have to put my glue beyond that point i'm getting very low on glue i'm supposed to be getting a delivery of glue from amazon tomorrow so i hope i get it because i have so many projects coming up so i need more glue then let's put our paper right on that and then we'll just trim this off all right so here we have our first tag now we just need to put something on the back um, for the back I'm actually just going to use a vintage book page so I have a book page right here that came out of a vintage cookbook I'm just going to use this. It's got a recipe for holiday fruit bread and like a sugar cinnamon loaf. So I thought that would be kind of neat. So I'm just going to take the back side of my larger envelope and we'll just glue this right down to the back side of the book page that we're using. I kind of want to get that holiday fruit bread on it. So I'm just going to go right about here and then we'll trim this right out. All right, so there is the back of my tag. Here's my inner portion that's gonna sit in here. So there it is right there. All right, so also what I'm gonna do is I want to cut the corners off to make it look a little bit more like a tag. I have a little piece of a credit card that I cut multiple angles of corners on just so that I know I have the same on both sides. So I'm going to use this one, this little credit card, to just make a little mark on my paper where I want to cut. And we'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. So it's just like a little template just so that I can um, have the same angle on both sides. And then we'll just cut that. All right, so now we can start gluing this together. Before we glue this together, I want to do a couple of things. Um, I want to distress this all up with some ink to make it look vintage and old. I'm going to use ground espresso on this one. Because the colors are a little bit darker and more muted, I want it to really stand out. So I'm going to just go ahead in and distress up all of these edges. All right, I have all of my edges all inked up. Now it's time to go ahead and start gluing all of these pieces into place. Okay, so my for my first one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue down this side and down this side. All right, so there's a little glue and that one's going to sit right in my first section just push those sides down all right then we're gonna glue our second pocket right along the edges right here fold that one up and glue that one down and then lastly, we'll glue our top one down, just along the edges. All right, and then glue that down. Okay, 
I finished inking all of my edges and I pulled out a few extra supplies and I apologize in the background landscapers are here so they're mowing and weed whacking and it's pretty loud um but anyhow I finished inking all the way around and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little decorating on these I have this vintage lace that I want to put across my top pocket right here um this one has almost like a faux lace on it that is actually printed right into the paper, but I wanna put this one on here. So we're just gonna put that right across the top. And also, while I was doing stuff, Amazon just came, so I was able to fill up uh, my glue, which is awesome. Literally, as I, was talk as I was running out of glue, Amazon came with more glue. Okay, so I'm going to just right across the top on my front pocket I'm gonna put more of my or I'm gonna put some of that vintage lace just glue this down I'll trim off the edges also just wanted to make sure I had enough to cover the top to cover that front pocket so let's just trim this right here so now we have this nice lace across the front also, I grabbed a few other little bits and pieces. I have this little small strip of green velvet ribbon. I thought that might be really pretty across the top of the lace right there, just to give it a little extra something. And then I'm gonna put the rest of it on this um, faux ribbon up top. Now again, you can just decorate these however you want. I'm gonna try to do each one a little bit differently because I want a lot of variety in each one of the tags. Okay. All right, I always save my little bits and pieces of scraps because they're great for clusters. All right, so then I have a few more little added accessories i have these little white paper flowers these came from dollar tree i think i'm gonna put one of those and a little black button just on the front of uh, my front pocket so i'm just decorating these up just a little bit put that little black button right there and we'll put our flower kind of in front of it now you could also distress the edges of this flower a little bit, which actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go around and just distress my flower pieces just to make it so it's not so stark white. So it looks a little worn and vintage. There. And I also have a little bit of this holly berry. I don't know if I wanna do maybe just a piece of the um, it's this is vintage so it's plastic so I might just do a little piece of the green Let's see if I can flatten it out a little bit well, I'm just gonna cut that edge right off and then we'll put a little piece of this green kind of up underneath my lace I think actually for this I'm gonna use my hot glue because it's plastic so I think it will hold better with the hot glue. So there we go. It's just a little bit of decoration just on the front there. I have a bunch of little Christmas tags that I've printed out. We can go back in and decorate a little bit more with some tags. Okay, so I pulled out a few little tags. I have a couple little pieces of ephemera that came out of my Christmas ephemera kit. I have a little tiny mini Santa's Village ticket, which is in the gray colors, which pull the grays from the tag really nicely. So we're gonna use that. And then I also have a little special delivery from the North Pole tag. So I am just going to ink these up just a little bit. And then we'll put these. Now we have sirens driving by. It's so loud here today. It's not normally like this. All right, and I'm just gonna put these right on the front of my big tag. We'll just glue these right down. And I also put another little 
um, cutout that I had of a vintage Betty Crocker holiday almanac. So there's nothing on the back, so it can be a little writing space, but I'm gonna put that in the front pocket. And I'm gonna leave this middle pocket right here for our recipe tags, which we're, will go in at the end of the project. Now that I have this tag almost decorated, what I did was I have a little circle press. This is a 5 8 circle press. I cut out just a little circle right here. We're gonna glue this right to the top center of our tag to make like a little um, area for um, a hole to be punched. But I'm just gonna glue that right in the center top, just like that. I'm just guesstimating where the center is and I want that to dry for a minute. And then I'm just gonna take my hole punch. It's just a regular hole punch and we're gonna punch a hole right through this. Now I'm not gonna be putting a brad or um, an eyelet in this one because we're gonna be using a large ring, which these are my rings. I got this kit off of Amazon. There's multi sizes. I will link this in the description below. Let me open it up here. I think it's taped shut. So for this project, I think I'm gonna use this size right here. I think this is like an inch and a half or two inches. It's an inch and a half. So I'm gonna use the inch and a half ring for this specific project. These are just these rings that pop open like this, and then you can put things in them. And so we're gonna be putting our tags in them. So I finished up my recipe, my vintage recipe tag ring. I ended up doing one, two, three, four, five. I ended up doing six different tags. Obviously I didn't show every one of them because it would have been like a six hour video, but this was the one that we did um, as an example. And so here is the tag complete. I ended up putting a couple little charms on here. As you can see, I added a few things to each one of the recipes. I added a little um, tag tab here, and then I added some writing space on the back on that one. This one, I also added a backing on it. Um, this one just has a chocolate chip cookie recipe, a vintage chocolate chip cookie recipe. Here's another recipe card up here that I just did a little ribbon. Um, with a flower and a pearl on it. There's nothing on the back on that one. Um, and then I just embellished it with a little bow up here and then the little embellishments and a few more little tags down here. So that was the first one we did. I'll quickly show you the other ones that I did, just so you kind of have a reference of some ideas on different ways to make them. Um, so this was another tag that I did. And for this one, I had the pockets go on the side. So the main recipe, actually I think there's two main recipes in this one. This one right here um, pulls out from the side and this one is like, um, it was on a piece of lined paper and I shrunk it down and I um, put some more writing space on the back with a cute little dangle and um, a Christmas number one on there. That one is for Christmas plum pudding. 
So that one slides in the side, just like that. Then I put a couple of other little tags in the front pocket here. These are just little um, tags that came off of my Christmas ephemera tag um, digital that I have. This one is just Christmas toys and games and then Santa's village and both of them have writing space on the back. So those just kind of slide in the front. And then I have another recipe at the top which I did another little tag label for, and that's just blank on the back. And this one, um, I did like a little decorative piece at the top here. Um, I used one of my papers on the back so you can write on, and um, I just did like a little decorative um, finish at the top and put, punched a hole in it with a little ribbon and some, um, some little stamps on that one. This next one was a really fun one. This was a smaller one and we actually used the window um, and we put some plaid lined paper that came from my paper set in the little window on this one. This one has um, just a single pocket with some space on the back um, that you can write on as well. And then we have a little recipe card right here, blank on the back and then just another little tag with um, chocolates from um, a cookbook on the front with a little, we did a ribbon hanger on this one with a little um, snowflake on a safety pin. And then I did a little cluster down here for decoration. So that one came out really cute as well. This one is almost like a booklet. So what I did with this one was this, it's a little bit on the thicker side. Um, I did a little brad with a tab that you can um, close shut, but you open this one up like a booklet and then there's the little lace pockets in here and then the recipes are in the little lace pockets um, on the inside. So you could definitely add to this um, other little recipes or whatnot. And there is a window here and there is pockets down through the top. And then there's also another pocket on the front. And this one I put a tab on it so you can pull this one right out. Um, and that one has more of my paper lined on the back of that one. So that was just another really different idea, more like a booklet style. All right, this one is another one that has a back pocket. And so the tag, uh, the recipe comes out of the back pocket. And again, I did another little tag and dangle on that one. And then there is also a top pocket with a window on this one. So here we have a large recipe, or actually this ended up being a little writing booklet. So you could write, I used, um, coffee dyed paper on this little writing pad. So this slides right down into this main pocket here. And then you can see it through the window here in the front. And then um, just one of my papers on the back on that one. This is another one. This one I did, um, it's a smaller one. So I used a press and um, punched out a little scalloped circle and then did some lace in it and glued that to a tag that has um, one pocket right in the center. So here's your center pocket with your recipe. And then it also has a tuck spot. Put that back in there. It has a little tuck spot here in the front where you can tuck other little things in the front. And then there's another pocket on the back for more recipes like that. Thank you. Fitting cup. Yep. So those are the recipe tag rings that we did. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be listing this up for sale in my Etsy shop. So make sure you go check out the link below for that, as well as information on how you can go ahead and get these papers to do this project. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stick around for more Christmas in July videos to come, and we will see you again in the next video. Take care.